Hi, this is Ron Sipsek, and this is the fourth part in a five-part series on basic principles in supply and demand. In this particular segment, we're going to take a look at how changes in demand affect the equilibrium price and quantity. In segment four, we took a look at shortages and surpluses, disequilibrium conditions, and we held the equilibrium price and quantity constant. Now we look at factors that actually cause the equilibrium quantity and price to change. We begin with the market model and we notice that this market model is in equilibrium. At a price of PE1 we operate at point 0.1 and the market operates at QE1 which is a place in equilibrium quantity where the quantity demanded equals the quantity supplied. So PE1 is what we call the market clearing price. Why? Because the market clears. The amount produced is precisely equal to the amount demanded. Now if you watched segment four, you heard me say that markets are seldom in equilibrium, that equilibrium is the exception, not the rule. Why do we talk about equilibrium? In fact, why do we start this model out in equilibrium? It's because equilibrium conditions are where markets gravitate to. So to simplify this analysis, we start the market out in equilibrium. It's not going to stay there for long, it's going to move into disequilibrium very quickly, but we're going to start out in equilibrium and move from equilibrium to equilibrium. Actually, we'll move from equilibrium to disequilibrium and then back to equilibrium. This is called comparative statics, and this is a type of analysis where we're basically taking snapshots. Here's a picture of the market at point one. We're going to change something and look at the market at point two and we're going to try to understand how the market moved from point one to point two. In other words, taking a couple snapshots of the market and then trying to talk about how things actually changed. Let's, uh, let's talk about a current example. I want to look at the oil market. If you look at the world oil market in the last eight to ten years, you see a market where the demand for oil has been increasing. This has been largely due to increases in income in countries like China and India. These nations are developing, they're rapidly industrializing, and of course rapidly industrializing nations are going to need lots of oil, at least in the world we currently live in. So what I want to do is I'm going to move below the graph and I'm actually going to set up what I call a logic sequence. I'm going to set up six blanks and I'm going to show you factor by factor what's changing as I modify this diagram. So we'll be looking at steps of change. So blank is going to affect 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 blankety blank. So we have what is called a causal relationship here and we're going to look at a number of factors that lead to the changes in the oil market. We begin by assuming that there's an increase in the income incomes of oil buyers. Now income can affect demand two ways. One way a higher income in effect can affect demand is to increase it. In this case the good is assumed to be normal. So we're assuming here that oil, oil is a normal, normal good. A normal good is a good where the increase in income leads to an increase in demand. Now let's not forget what an increase in demand is. We talked about this a couple lessons ago. An increase in demand is an increase in the quantity demanded that had nothing to do with price. In other words, buyers are wanting to buy more, but it's not because the price has dropped. No, no, no. Buyers are wanting to buy more because the income of those buyers has increased. So there's been a change here in what we term a non-price factor. Income is a non-price factor. And if you recall, changes in non-price factors change demand. Now let's go back up to the diagram and take a look at what has happened. If there's been an increase in income and an increase in demand, the demand curve for oil has moved to the right. 
So we can graph this as a horizontal movement to the right. This specifically is called an increase in demand. Okay? The effect of this increase in demand is to push the quantity demanded way out to this point. So, the quantity demanded has moved to the right. Whenever the demand curve shifts to the right, the quantity demanded is moving to the right. Because what is an increase in demand? An increase in the quantity demanded. What is an increase in demand? It's an increase in the quantity demanded at a given price. PE1 has not changed. The price of oil has not changed yet. It has remained constant, but buyers all of a sudden want to buy more oil. Why? Because of rising incomes. So this movement right here was caused by rising income. Not due to price. Price hasn't moved yet. So in fact, this price is now too low. And in the last lesson, we looked at low prices. Low prices cause shortages. So this is a shortage condition. Let me move the picture down a little bit. You can see this. The quantity demanded is right here, but the quantity supplied remains here. Why? Because the price is still hitting the supply curve at this point, whereas the price is now hitting the demand curve at this point. We have a shortage which means this cannot be the equilibrium quantity. So the equilibrium price and the equal, original equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity um, are no longer in existence. By the way, I would remind you that when the demand curve shifts, the old demand curve is really no longer in play. Now, you don't have to do this to your notes, but keep in mind that once a demand curve shifts our focus is on the new demand curve and the original supply curve so we can ignore this and that makes it easier for us to see that this is actually the shortage right here this gap here is the shortage now we learned in the last lesson that when there's a shortage the market will not remain in that place there's incentives for price setters to change their behavior. Why? If you're running a shortage in oil, you're obviously not producing enough oil to meet the amount of oil demanded. In other words, you're missing out on profits you could otherwise have. Remember, oil companies attempt to maximize profits. So if there's greater demand for their product, they have an incentive to do two things. One, they have an incentive to raise their price. Their inventory levels are falling. And when their inventory levels are falling, the first thing they have an incentive to do is to raise their price. Raise their price towards where? Towards PE2, which notice is the new equilibrium point. Now, as the price increases, two things happen. One, on the buying side, we move up the demand curve, excuse me, up the supply curve. We're not on the buying side, we're on the supply side. Sorry about that. So on the supply side, the higher price moves us up the supply curve. What are we saying? We're saying that producers of oil are going to want to produce more oil. You go, really? Yeah. Higher prices, higher profits. Higher profits, higher production. That's called the law of supply. But as the price of oil increases, as the price of oil increases, we move up the new demand curve. Why? We're no longer on the old demand curve. The, the demand curve is shifted. So the higher price that the shortage causes moves us up this demand curve. Now what's going to happen is some of the buyers who are interested in more oil are going to step back out. So higher income is pushing the quantity demanded higher, but higher prices is pushing the quantity demanded back down. So you have actually two factors working on the demand side. You have the higher income, 
which is actually causing people to want to buy more oil, but you also have rising oil prices, which are inhibiting or um, mitigating that increase in the quantity demanded. Now notice when all is said and done, when the price rises to PE2, the quantity supplied will have increased, the quantity demanded will have come back down, and where will we be? We'll be at a new equilibrium price and a new equilibrium quantity. So let's go ahead and finish our logic sequence down here. The increase in demand creates a shortage. Well, what is a shortage? It's where the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied. That's what a shortage is. The quantity demanded has surged, and now it exceeds the quantity supplied. But shortages are not stable conditions. That will lead to higher prices. We talked about this in the last lesson. Higher prices are the medicine for disequilibrium in this case. Higher prices motivate buyers to buy less. This is the law of demand, and we see that with the green line right here. But higher prices motivate producers to produce more. Higher prices, higher profits, higher production, law of supply. We see that right here. This is the profit motive in operation. So notice the higher prices correct the problem. This is the medicine. We've got a shortage in the marketplace. Higher prices correct the problem by motivating buyers to buy less and producers to produce more. Notice there's a pattern here. There's a pattern. It's a very important pattern. We want you to see this. It was a change. It was a change in a non price factor. So notice this is delta, the Greek symbol delta, which means change in. So it was a change in a non price factor, which caused what? Disequilibrium. So, why do markets get thrown into disequilibrium? Well, one reason is shifts in the demand curve. If the demand curve moves due to a change in a non price factor, the market will be in a state of balance. However, disequilibrium leads to what? A change in price. And then, of course, we know the rest of the story here. The change in price is going to motivate what? A change in behavior, and that's going to bring us back to equilibrium. Perfect. I've got enough room here for that big word, equilibrium. So we see a progression here. Changes in non-price factors cause what? Disequilibrium. Disequilibrium leads to what? Changes in price. Changes in price bring us back into equilibrium. All of our sublime demand models will follow this pattern. Notice how the market system is self-adjusting. When it's disturbed, when there's a destabilizing factor, in this case a positive factor, rising incomes is a positive shock to the system. Nobody's against higher incomes, but higher incomes are going to throw the oil market into a state of disequilibrium. The disequilibrium condition in the marketplace, in this case, is a shortage. The shortage is going to lead to a higher price. Why? Because price setters are not content with shortages. So they respond to that disequilibrium by raising their price. But the higher price corrects the shortage by motivating buyers to buy less and producers to produce more. Notice when all is said and done, the pr equilibrium price of oil has increased and, check this out, the equilibrium quantity of oil has increased. Let's go back up to our diagram so you see this. Look, don't miss this. This is, this is interesting stuff. The equilibrium price of oil has increased and the equilibrium quantity of oil has increased. You go, well, that does not seem intuitive. That, does, that seems counterintuitive. It is not counterintuitive if you think about what happened here. Yes, usually when the price of something goes up, people buy less. Sure enough, that occurred here. When the price of oil went up, buyers of oil want to buy less.
But notice they're buying less after, look at here, they're buying less after they already wanted to buy more. So in other words, it's possible for the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity to increase if there's been a change in a non-price factor. So this is not, let me tell you what this is, this is not a violation of the law of supply, not a violation of the law of supply. Remember when we gave the law, excuse me, the law of demand. I'm not even on the right side. Sorry about that. This is not a violation of the law of demand. Thinking about food, not about economics. I'm sorry. So let me get let me get my mind back on the game here. This is not a violation of the law of demand. Remember we said when there's an increase in price, the quantity demanded goes down. But that assumes that income, Y, income is being held what? Constant. In this particular example up here, income didn't stay constant. Income increased. So it's possible if income is increasing at the same time price is increasing, which is exactly what happened here. There was an increase in income. which led also to an increase in price. If there's an increase in income at the same time there's an increase in price, it's possible that the quantity demanded can increase. And in fact, in this case, it did. If you look at the overall effect on quantity demanded in this model, you see that buyers in the end end up buying more. They ran all the way up to here. They came back to here. But in the end, they're buying more than what they started with. Okay? You would not pick up these little nuances in the marketplace if you didn't have this model, this supply and demand model, in your head. In the next segment, we will take a look at how changes in supply affect the equilibrium price and quantity.